Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This series of short articles uh, were written in order to understand better guidance of Nur Maulana Shah Kareem al Husseini Hazar Imam Salawatullahi Alayhi about the diversity and the pluralism of the global Ismaili Jamaat. When we establish Satara prayers in our Jamaat Khanas, we are all aware that these prayers are for protection against natural calamities and other physical difficulties. We must, however, also be aware that apart from very visible calamities, our Jamaat, which is spread in many countries, may also be affected by more subtle changes. For instance, the onslaught of what Molana Hazar Imam describes as, and I quote, value systems which are not Islamic, which come from outside our world and our faith, close quotation marks, could well undermine our identity as Ismaili Muslims. Thus, the congregational additional prayers we offer as a Jamaat are to ease not only our physical, but also our spiritual and intellectual difficulties. Our Giryauzari prayers will be more deeply felt if we keep this wider scope of our prayers in the forefront of our minds. We are indeed seeking divine help to ease our difficulties which are not limited to the physical arena, but are also experienced in our spiritual and intellectual lives. Furthermore, by remembering the worldwide community of our diverse Jamaat in our prayers, we deepen our feelings of unity amongst our spiritual brothers and sisters across the globe. The write-ups will attempt to describe the diversity of our Jamaat in the light of Molana Hazar Imam's guidance. On 6 October 1988, Imam Zaman made the following Mubarak Farman in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania. He said, My beloved spiritual children, as we approach the 21st century, it is quite clear that our world is getting smaller in terms of contacts amongst human beings from various parts of the globe. And this is true within the Ummah and it is true within the Jamaat. More and more people are in contact with each other from different parts of the world. And it must now be more clear to you than ever before that the Jamaat, the Ismaili Jamaat around the world, is more diverse, is more widespread, speaks more languages, has more inherited traditions and cultures than maybe many of you have suspected. This is immense diversity. It is diversity of language. It is diversity of place, of a way of living. It is diversity in cultural history. And yet, each and every spiritual child, whether he is from northern Pakistan, whether he is from Ag Afghanistan, whether he is from the Soviet Union, or whether he is from China, each of these spiritual children is a murid of the Imam of the time. And as murids of the Imam of the time, no matter which part of the world we live in, we are members of a spiritual family. We are spiritual brothers and sisters. The Syrian tradition is the oldest within the Ismaili frontierless brotherhood. 
Syrian Ismailis today are mainly concentrated in two regions, Al Khawabi and Salamia. The main town of Salamia is also known by the same name. They are the oldest section of the Ismaili Jamaat because their existence goes back in history to the times of our early Imams, Maulana Wafi Ahmad, Maulana Taqi Muhammad and Maulana Raziyuddin Abdullah. This period of our history is known as Daur al Sata, which means that in the context of the political situation of the time, our Imams maintained an extremely low profile. However, the activities of propagating Ismaili doctrines were carried out vigorously by Ismaili Da'is. Only the chief Da'is were in physical contact with the Imam of the time. Syria became prominent once again during the Fatimid times and later on during the Alamut period when Sayyidna Rashid Din Sinan was in charge of the Ismaili forts in Syria. One of these famous forts, Masyaf, is today being restored by Molana Hazri Imam's agencies to preserve the historical heritage of the Syrian Jamaat. Following this period of history, the Syrian Ismailis had very intermittent physical contact with the Imams, who were then in Iran and later on in the Indian subcontinent. This was done through the sending of delegations to the Imam's presence. However, Syrian Ismailis have retained a very strong Ismaili identity in all circumstances. Maulana Sultan Muhammad Shah alayhi salam says in his memoirs, In Syria, one such family of representatives has retained an unbroken connection with my family for more than a thousand years. There are many beautiful Jamaat Khanas in Syria. The mausoleum of Prince Ali Salman Khan is adjacent to the main Jamaat Khana of Salamiya. Most Jamaat Khanas have libraries and the members of the Jamaat, young and old, show a great interest in Ismaili history and philosophy. The mother tongue of Syrian Ismailis is Arabic, which means that they are very fortunate to have direct access to a substantial literature of the Ismaili Tariqa in that language. In other words, they are lucky to have access to primary sources. The Jamaat in Syria also places great emphasis on a literary tradition. There is a great deal of poetry in Arabic. However, it is a tradition in the Jamaat to compose new qasidas on every important occasion, particularly on Imamat Day. The Syrian Jamaat, with its traditional warmth and hospitality, demonstrates the strength of our spiritual brother and sisterhood. The spirit of brotherhood is also reinforced by the guidance of Imam Zaman given in Karachi, Pakistan on 26 October 2000. Mulan Hazir Imam said, And I say to my spiritual children, keep together this spirit of brotherhood. Keep the principles of brotherhood alive in your hearts. And while you keep your traditions alive, make space for others from the Jamaat from other parts of the world. So that my Jamaat, keeping to its individual traditions, is nonetheless one Jamaat, working together for the benefit of all Murids, wherever they may be. This is a strong principle which I would like my spiritual children to make theirs, to live by that principle.
and inshallah in the years ahead all the jamaats will help each other to improve the quality of their lives iran was the seat of imamat for seven centuries from the very beginning ismaili da'wa has existed in iran however the headquarters of imamat moved to various parts of iran following the demise of Maulana Mustan Sirbillah the first in Cairo at the end of the 11th century thus names such as Alamot Azerbaijan Anjudan Kahak Kirman and Mahalat are sources of rich historical memories for all Ismailis and particularly the Iranian Ismailis their close association with the headquarters of imamat for such a long period of time has created a strong and resilient tradition their affiliation to the family of the imams is reflected in the fact that molana sultan muhammad shah refers to the iranian ismailis as khalus which means maternal uncles in modern times Ismailis have settled mostly in the northeast of Iran where one finds whole villages which are predominantly Ismaili. The main center is Mashhad where there is a Jamaat Khana distinguished by a facade on which is inscribed the hall of the Ayat An-Nur. Irani Ismailis have a rich and long tradition. A cursory look at the table of contents in the collection of Ismaili poetry published by the Institute of Ismaili Studies entitled The Shimmering Light shows how prolific their literary tradition has been. The outstanding poets included in this collection are Pir Nasir Khusru, Sayyidna Hasan bin Sabba, Rais Hasan Nizari Kohistani, Abdullah Ansari, Khair Khwai Harati, Khaki Khurasani, and Fidai Khurasani. The devotional poetry of these great Iranian Ismailis is recited in the original Farsi in the Jamaat Khanas of Iran. Iranian Ismailis are also fortunate to have access to the great Sufi esoteric literature in Farsi of such mystics as Maulana Rumi, Hafiz and Fariduddin Attar. Let us celebrate the pluralism and diversity of the global Ismaili Jamaat in the words of one Iranian Ismaili poet Fidai Khurasani who served the Jamaat during the time of our 48th Imam Maulana Sultan Muhammad Shah Salawatullahi Alaihi Fidai Khurasani writes about the recognition of the Imam of the time which is the essence of our tariqa we all share regardless of where we come from and what tradition we belong to he says he is always present a witness with his followers but who has seen his beauty except the blessed he who is the cup bearer of the fount of paradise is aware altogether of the hearts of his followers whether young or old like the sun in the sky he is manifest in the world but the blind bat cannot see his luminous face to conclude in the mubarak words of molana hazri imam at karachi on the 27th of october 2000 and i hope that this sense of a jamaat which is a global jamaat with many different traditions but where the essence is the same will bring you strength and happiness from whatever background you come and from whatever part of the world you come this is a strong important message 
that I would like all my spiritual children in Pakistan and around the world to think about because it is a strength of the Jamaat to have this pluralism. The Central Asian tradition has, um, has emerged after centuries of isolation. The Ismaili Tariqa had reached the region of Central Asia by the beginning of the Fatimid era of our history in the 8th century. However, the propagation of the faith escalated with the work of Pir Nasir Khusru and the Da'is he sent out all across Greater Badakhshan. The Da'is who followed him extended their activities as far as the Xinjiang region of China. Pir Nasir was not born an Ismaili. He converted to our faith in Cairo during a seven-year journey of personal search. He writes in his Divan, When the light of the Imam shone upon my soul, even though I was black as a pitch-dark night, I became the shining sun. The supreme name is the Imam of the time. Through him, Venus-like, I ascended from the earth to the heaven. Pir Nasir's work of spreading the Ismaili Tariqa was so successful that it provoked opposition and he was compelled to abandon his home in bulk and take refuge in the desolate valley of Yumgan in Afghanistan. He continued his work from this valley until his death. Molana Hazar Imam, referring to the emerging Jamaats of Central Asia, said in a farman at Surat, India, on 10th November 1992, And remember that these murids come from the same interpretation but often with a different historical context. And that historical context, the context of Nasir Khusru, is very important and must not be forgotten. The last decade of the 20th century witnessed spectacular political upheavals in the former Soviet Union leading to its collapse. In terms of our history, for the first time, the global Jamaat became aware of the presence of a significant number of Ismailis in Afghanistan and Tajikistan. Within a short time, we learned more about our Central Asian spiritual brothers and sisters from the work of Imamat institutions and particularly Imam Zaman's Mubarak Farmans. During his visit to India in November 1992, Molana Hazir Imam spoke at every center about the Ismailis of Central Asia. In Bombay on 23rd November 1992, he said, These Murids have been practicing their faith for many decades in extremely difficult circumstances, but they have kept their faith alive. The next years will be a process of discovery for them and the Jamaats around the world as to how they practice, as to what their traditions are, what their cultural history is, and it is important that we should recognize that these Jamaats must come forward. They must be encouraged to join with the Jamaats in other parts of the world and we must respect their traditions and their language and their history. And those Murids must come forward and feel part of the frontierless brotherhood of our Tariqa. And whether they communicate in Tajik or whether they communicate in Pashto or whether they communicate in Farsi or whether they communicate in Arabic, it does not matter. If the essence of Tariqa is respected, then we must be happy to bring them out and encourage them to work with us. 
We have learned that our Tajiki and Afghani Ismaili brothers and sisters have kept their faith alive through practices such as the recitation of madhurs or devotional poetry in their various dialects as well as in Tajik. They have a tradition of khalifas or religious officials who officiate at births, marriages and deaths. During the period of isolation, the khalifas preserved and handed down the traditions. One particular ceremony which exists from the da'wa of Pir Nasir Khusru is known as chirag e -Roshan. It consists of Quranic recitations and zikr accompanied by a sacred musical instrument known as rubab. Diversity within diversity, the da'wa in the Indian subcontinent. The Ismaili Tariqa first reached the Indian subcontinent even before the beginning of the Fatimid era. However, the Da'wa gained great impetus with the arrival of Pir Sadruddin from Iran during the time of Maulana Islam Shah, Salawatullahi Alayhi. Pir Sadruddin, Pir Shams, and Pir Hassan Kabiruddin were the most prominent in converting thousands of Hindus to the Ismaili Tariqa. The tradition of the Indian subcontinent has as its main features the establishment of Jamaat Khanas, the appointment of Mukhis and Kamadiyas, the use of Ginans and Garbis in the process of conversion and also the introduction of certain practices such as the Ghatpat ceremony. Molana Hazar Imam, during his visit to Nairobi on 11th December 1988, first explained the similarity between Ginans and Qasidas. In Hyderabad, India on 20th November 1992, he elaborated on his previous farmans and said, The second matter I wish to raise is that you have just recited a very beautiful Qasida in front of the Imam of the time. And in an earlier farman to the Jamaat, I mentioned to you that our Jamaat has diversity. But I have mentioned to you also that that diversity is strength. And anyone who listens to a Qasida of this sort or of other Qasidas that may come from Afghanistan or may come from Tajikistan and that may be in a different language than Gujarati or Urdu or Sindhi, if it is in Tajik, if it is in Farsi, if it is in Arabic, that doesn't matter. It is the expression of the feelings of the people of our Tariqa about their belief, about their conviction, about their attitudes to life. This is our strength. And I want to underline this because in the years ahead, I will be paying great attention to ensuring that these traditions come forward from all the various Jamaats of the world so that we may all know what are their traditions, what are their practices, and sharing these around the world so that all Jamaats are identified with our practices and no Jamaat feels that its traditions or its history are not known and admired and accepted by the Jamaat worldwide. And therefore, I want you to know that I was very happy, very happy to hear this Qasida today and I congratulate the Murids who recited the Qasida. And I'm most happy to have noticed that my Jamaat at large knows this Qasida also. Cultural and language diversity also exists within the Indian subcontinent Jamaat. For instance, the Jamaat of the subcontinent is by no means monolingual or monocultural. There are Ginans in Gujarati, Hindi, Sindhi and Punjabi. The Ismailis of Gujarat and Kutch 
are known as Khojas from the title Khoja given by Pir Sadruddin which means the honored ones. The Jamaat of Punjab on the other hand is known as Shamsis because they were mainly converted by Pir Shams. Molana Hazir Imam emphasized this tremendous diversity in his recent Farmans in Karachi. On October 26, 2000, he said, As I have in front of me a Sindhi Jamaat, I will remind you that when I was much younger and I visited Pakistan, the Sindhis used to tell me jokes about the Punjabis. The Punjabis used to tell me jokes about the Baluch, and the Baluch used to tell me jokes about the Sindhis. What is the moral of this? The moral of the story is that you are one brotherhood, and you can laugh and be happy and enjoy your differences. Your differences do not have to be a source of conflict. The question that every murid must ask himself or herself is, what is good for the Jamaat and what can I do to help the Jamaat to improve its quality of life? And those questions do not get divided up as to what can I do for the Sindhi Jamaat or what can I do for the Punjabi Jamaat or what can I do for the Gujarati Jamaat. The question is, what can I do for the Jamaat? That is the question. So, there are differences, cultural, linguistic, historic. We are fortunate to have those differences. But make those differences work for the benefit and the good of all the Jamaat. High Mountain Ismaili communities of northern Pakistan and China. The northern areas of Pakistan, namely Gilgit, Hunza and Chitral, are politically part of Pakistan today. However, their history and traditions are distinct from the Ismaili traditions of the subcontinent. They have been a part of Badakhshan and before the creation of Pakistan, the Ismailis in all these areas were known as the Badakhshan Jamaat. The northern areas are the meeting point of some of the world's highest mountain ranges. Therefore, until the recent past, the Ismailis in this area were isolated from the rest of the subcontinent. The Ismaili Da'wa in Chitral and surrounding areas has continued from the time of Pir Nasir Khusro. In Hunza and Gilgit, in the beginning, Buddhism was mainly practiced and was later replaced by Twelver Shism. Some 200 years ago, Ismaili Dais came from Badakhshan and converted the local king, thus establishing the Ismaili faith in these mountain-locked areas. The practices are very similar to those of Badakhshan and belong to the tradition of Pir Nasir Khusro. The ceremony of Chirage Roshan is held in great esteem. There are Jamaat Khanas in every village and settlement and they are the best buildings in the region. There is a vibrant tradition of Qasidas in the local languages such as Burshaski, Shana and Waki. All the Jamaat Khanas reverberate with the full voiced recitation of Qasidas. The children and young people are particularly enthusiastic reciters. On 10th March 1940, Maulana Sultan Muhammad Shah Salwatullahi Alayhi made an historic farman in Farsi through the radio in Bombay to the Jamaats of the northern areas. He said, I remember all Jamaats of the northern frontiers of India such as Chitral, Hunza, Gilgit, Badakhshan, and all friends and devotees with benediction. Be sure that the light of my love and kindness will reach the whole Jamaat of Hunza like the sun. Men and women, small and big, young and old, 
All of you are my spiritual children. I never forget you and will never forget you both in this world and the next. Try to educate your children and strive to learn European languages and the English language. Obey the ruler of the time and be kind to those who are younger and subordinate to you. This Farman was made in 1940. Just as the Irani Ismailis are fondly referred to as Kalus and the Gujarati Ismailis as Khojas, similarly, the Ismailis of the northern areas are known as Maulais, that is, the followers or devotees of the Mola or the Imam of the time. Traveling on the famous Karakoram Highway, which links China and Pakistan, one enters the Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region. There are whole villages in the Khotan, Yarkand and Tashkurgan area which are entirely Ismaili. Ismailis in China are known as Tajiks and have much in common with the Tajik Ismailis of Gorno Badakhshan, including the tradition of Pir Nasir Khosru. There are over 30 Jamaat Khanas which were built from the 1950s onwards. Maulana Sultan Muhammad Shah mentions the Jamaat of China in his memoirs, published in 1954. He says, With Xinjiang, Kashgar and Yarkand, we have no communication at present, since the frontier is closed, but no more firmly against Ismailis than against anyone else. But we know that they are free to follow their religion and that they are firm and devoted Ismailis with a great deal of self-confidence and the feeling that they constitute by far the most important Ismaili community in the whole world. With Maulana Hazar Imam's grace, we have surveyed the diverse traditions historic, cultural, and linguistic of the Ismaili Jamaats worldwide. We have seen how each unique pattern fits to complete the whole tapestry of the contemporary Ismaili world. In the next article, we shall discuss Imam Zaman's guidance and vision for the diverse global Ismaili Jamaat. Diversity is strength. To understand how diversity is strength, we can use the analogy of a beautiful mosaic where each piece is distinctive but contributes to creating a marvelous, complete picture. The different pieces are held together by a strong glue. What holds the Ismaili Global Jamaat together? The answer is that we all recognize the same Imam of the time. Allegiance, obedience and devotion to the Imam of the time are the adhesive which holds the mosaic of the different Ismaili linguistic, cultural and historic traditions together. Whether we recite Ginans, Kasidas or Madhos, the content always expresses love for the Imam. We all believe in an esoteric tariqa in which emphasis is placed on the role of the intellect and on leading a life of balance between the material and the spiritual. We may express ourselves in different languages and live in different parts of the world, but, for, but love for the Imam and the Ismaili greeting, Ya Ali Madad, are like keys which open the hearts of Ismailis the world over. In the Ismaili context of diversity, in the Ismaili context, diversity is strength because keeping our individual traditions, we are nevertheless one Jamaat 
following the guidance of the Imam of the time. In accordance with his farmans and directions, we work together for the benefit of all Ismailis wherever they may be. We strive to help each other to improve the quality of our lives and to work for the benefit of the societies amongst whom we live. Since these principles are very close to our hearts, we perhaps take them for granted. A quick look at the contemporary wor world around us will convince us how fortunate we are. Many parts of our world are torn apart by ethnic violence and hatred. As a diverse but united community that respects differences, we can set an example to those communities where the opposite situation prevails. It is for this reason that Maulana Sultan Muhammad Shah Salwatullahi Alaihi stipulated in his Platinum Jubilee message of 12th December 1953. He said, It is my hope that my spiritual children, the Ismailis, will by the example of their own higher enlightenment and helpful cooperative movements amongst themselves, set to the world an example of better fraternity and brotherhood, which alone can free men from the fear and dangers of moral and mental discord, which leads to disaster for all. In the extensive guidance which Molana Hazriman blessed us with, particularly during his visit to Pakistan in the year 2000, we can identify some clear principles on which he wishes us to base our attitudes towards our diverse global Jamaat. He wishes us to build unity through acceptance of difference and knowledge of what that difference represents. In his Farman in Nairobi in 1988, he had spoken about how a tariqa such as ours can benefit from the creativity, the wisdom, the knowledge of people from more and more parts of the world. Building strength and unity on the basis of diversity, Maulana Hazar Imam wishes us to progress to a position where we can, as a global brotherhood of Ismailis, respond to the needs of any Jamaat in any part of the world at any time. On 23rd October 2000, he said at the Darkhana in Karachi, these principles of generosity, of help, of helping others, they also go across frontiers, which means the Jamaats from various parts of the world can assist the Jamaats from Afghanistan, but the Jamaat from Afghanistan also has qualities, and it can make those qualities available to other Jamaats from its knowledge, its traditions, its inherited historic memory. So it is important to me that our Jamaat should be genuinely, genuinely a worldwide brotherhood. That is the meaning of belonging to our tariqa in Islam. That is an immense strength. We must consider that pluralism in our Jamaat is a magnificent blessing from Allah. And we must make pluralism work for the benefit of the Jamaat worldwide. Drawing knowledge, imagination, creative thought from all sources, wherever it may come from, to the benefit of the Jamaat. <clears throat> it is apt because this is being recorded in the middle of the golden jubilee of Imam Zaman that we should recall Maulana Hazar Imam's silver jubilee message to the Ismaili community globally. At that time he had said Build upon prayer and brotherhood, for they are timeless, and it is only the life of the soul which is eternal.
Imam of the time unifies the diversity of the global Ismaili Jamaat. We live in the context of a world marked by conflict and global tension. The power of communal prayer at such critical times is a source of comfort for every mu'min. Additionally, intensive congregational prayer during which we pray for the global Ismaili Jamaat as well as for the peace of the entire world takes on a greater significance and meaning. Ismaili teachings of the frontier spiritual brother and sisterhood of murids irrespective of their country of origin, language, culture or inherited traditions is emphasized by Imam Zaman in many Mubarak Farmans. Let us take a few moments to reflect on why we have this religious and spiritual fraternity and unity and how immensely fortunate we are to have such an outlook. During his historic visit to Syria in November 2001, when Mulana Hasimam gave mulakat to a very diverse audience, he said, In recent years, human society has, sadly, witnessed a polarization of differences amongst people in all forms of conflict. Practically no continent and no faith has been spared. And in a number of situations, inequities, some of historic origin and others more recent, have exploded into brutal conflict. Entire communities of ethnicity or faith or both have been or are threatened, whether it be here in the Middle East, in Western Europe, in Central Asia, or in Southeast Asia, or in Africa. This is a situation which I deplore and which cannot be acceptable to any individual who aspires to live life in peace, in dignity, and in security. In contrast, the Ismaili Jamaat, spread across more than 25 different countries, is an example where diversity or pluralism is not only accepted, but under the Imam's guidance, is welcomed and regarded as a strength and not a weakness. This is due entirely to the presence of the Imam of the time. He is the rope of Allah mentioned by God in Surah 3, Ayat 103 of the Holy Quran, to whom God invites people to hold fast and not be divided amongst themselves. Imam Zaman binds the whole Ismaili community through the act of bayya or oath of allegiance by which every Ismaili man and woman is a spiritual child of the Imam. This permanent spiritual bond between the Imam and the Ismaili murids is reflected within the community. All Ismailis are spiritual brothers and sisters a relationship that transcends our physical relationships. It is this spiritual bond that enables us to appreciate our diversities as not just an irreversible historical fact, but it is a strength for which we must be grateful, as Maulana Hazar Imam said in his Syrian Farman. In these articles, we will discuss the diversity of the Ismaili Jamaat represented in the devotional literature spanning more than a thousand years of history. Poetry published in the Shimmering Light, an anthology of Ismaili poetry, and Ginans will be analyzed to show how the language and the idiom may be diverse, but the fundamental message about the centrality of Imamat and the person of the Imam is the unity that binds and unites the Ismaili Jamaat. We will, inshallah, begin to appreciate the consistency and the continuity of the message in Ismaili devotional poetry through time and geographical space. A deeper understanding of the fundamental concept of Imamat will enhance our supplications. 
Our prayers for the global Jamaat will be more meaningful and will be underpinned by gratitude for our diversity that is held together by the unifying factor of the continuing light of Imamat. You are the light and every other light is darkness. The title of this article is one line of a verse from the Arabic poetry of Ibn Hani al-Andalusi and Ismaili from Spain who was the court poet of the Fatimid Caliph Maulana Imam al muiz Ibn Hani and the other Ismaili poets, many of whom were Da'is as well, composed poetry which was personal and devotional in character. However, the devotion was always based on a sure knowledge of the Holy Quran and the Hadith of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam. Arabic is a language of the Holy Prophet and of the revelation sent to him, namely the glorious Quran. The earliest Ismaili devotional poetry is in the Arabic language for the historical reason that our Imams from Maulana Ali to Maulana Musa Sirbila the I were based first in Makkah and Medina, then Syria and North Africa, and finally extending to Egypt, which was the seat of the Fatimid Empire. It is well known that Arabic as a language lends itself to poetic expression. Pre-Islamic Arabia was famous for its qasidas and Arabs were known for their prowess in being able to recite long poems from memory. The tradition of composing devotional poetry in Arabic still continues in our, in our Syrian Jamaat, where on special festival days such as Imam Adair, poetry competitions are held and members of the Jamaat are encouraged to express their personal devotion to the Imam of the time. As mentioned earlier, Ismaili devotional poetry is based on a thorough understanding of the foundational beliefs of our tariqah as expressed in the Quran and the traditions or ahadiths of the Holy Prophet. For instance, in a poem entitled The Proof of God, Ibn Hani addressing the Imam of his time says, you run with the light of God among his servants so that you may illumine their hearts and shine therein as his proof. This verse resonates by a 28 of Surah 57 in which Allah says, O believers, fear Allah and believe in his messenger and he will give you a twofold portion of his mercy and he will appoint for you a light whereby you shall walk and forgive you. Allah is all forgiving, all compassionate. In another poem, Ibn Hani says, If you were not present here, the pillars of civilization would collapse and human habitation crumble to dust. This sentiment is related directly to a hadith of the Holy Prophet Muhammad in which he stated, Had the world been devoid of the Imam for a moment, it would have been ruined with all its people. The central position and significance of Imamat is prominent in Ismaili devotional poetry. It is no surprise, therefore, if the Ismaili poets urge the readers and listeners to obey the Imam. Ibn Hani says, I saw the Imam, who is the foundation of faith. Obedience to him is success, and disobedience, loss. Sayyidina al muyad Fiddin Shirazi, who was a writer, poet, theologian, political and military organizer and one of the leading figures of the Fatimid government under Imam al muslim Sirbilla says in his poem entitled The Light of Intellect, the eye is of no avail if it does not receive light from the sun or the moon or from a burning torch. Similarly, the intellect during reflection by itself remains in the throes of doubt and bewilderment. 
this verse resonates the Ayah 28 of Surah 57, in which we heard how Allah's mercy manifests in the appointment of a light whereby believers can walk on the path of true religion through obedience and devotion. Such poetry is not only a source of inspiration, but a motivation to understand the reality of the light of Imamat and an encouragement to lead our lives in the light of divine guidance. The supreme name, Ismail Azam, is the Imam of the time. Persian poetry by Mulana Rumi, Hafiz, Fahidul Attar, Tidhasir Kutru, and many more, is part of the cultural heritage of humankind. Mulana Rumi was brought to the notice of the English speaking world when Prof. Reynold Nicholson, professor of Arabic and Persian literature at Cambridge University in the United Kingdom, completed a translation of his Masnavi in 1925. Fascination with the mystical poetry of Rumi continues with his growing popularity, particularly in North America, where presently he is the most read poet. The Ismaili Jamaat in Iran regards all Persian poetry as part of its national culture, and Sufi poets such as Rumi, Hafiz, Atta, as well as others, is regularly recited in the Jamaat Khanas of Iran. There is also a remarkable corpus of Ismaili poetry in Persian. This is due to the fact that after the fall of the Fatimid Empire, the Imams moved their seat first to Alamut in northwestern Iran, and then according to the exigencies of time, to various centers in Iran. 27 of our 49 Imams lived in Iran. Or to put it another way, Iran became the backdrop to Ismaili history for over six centuries. Ismaili devotional poetry in Farsi or Persian is likely to become even more important in the future because since the emergence of the Central Asian Ismailis, Persian is a language most spoken in our global Ismaili Jamaat. The title of this article, The Supreme Name Isme Azam is the Imam of the Time, is part of a famous verse of Pir Nasir Khusru in which he speaks about his conversion to the Ismaili Tariqa. He says, When the light of the Imam shone upon my soul, even though I was black as night, I became the shining sun. The supreme name is the Imam of the time. Through him, Venus like, I ascended from the earth to the heavens. The spiritual and intellectual transformation of Pir Nasir is echoed in the poetry of Nizari Kohistani, who writes, Finally, the Noah of the time led me to the ark of guidance, and I found myself saved from the billowing deluge. This verse shows that the smiley poets, writers and thinkers, regard the Imam of the time as the continuing light of the prophets. Nizari is further making a reference to a famous, unanimously accepted hadith of the Holy Prophet in which he declared, Verily, the parable of my Ahlul Bayt among you is like the parable of Noah's Ark. He who embarks on it is saved and he who lags behind is drowned. The individual spiritual relationship which each spiritual child of the Imam has with him is beautifully expressed in the poem If You Have Mola's Love by Fidai Khurasani. He says, If you have Mola's love in your heart, you are a soul. Otherwise, be sure that there is no real life in you. Except for Ali's friendship, nothing is profitable to you. Except 
for at least love. You are neither alive nor dead. These touching words reflect the central theme of the Holy Quran, where in Surah 8, Ayah 24, Allah says, O oh, you who believe, respond to Allah and the Messenger when He calls you to that which gives you life. As Ismailis, we believe that it is not enough to possess animal life and the partial intellect. The main aim of religion and the presence of the light of Allah in the chain of prophets and imams is to give the believers a higher life of faith, conviction and progress to spiritual enlightenment and to a perfect intellect. A prerequisite for this progress is love for the Prophet and the Imams from his progeny, a fact that is emphasized by Mawlana Sultan Muhammad Salawatullahi Alayhi in a Mubarak Farman in Dar Islam in 1937, where he said, You will have no fear in this world if you love the descendants of Muhammad and Ali. This one hint includes all the beauties of prayers and religion. The words of the Master, Imam, are the words of light. With words such as these and others, full of wisdom and conviction, our great peers converted thousands to the Ismaili Tariqa of Islam in the Indian subcontinent. History tells us that Dais, such as Pir Satgur Noor, had been sent to Sindh during an earlier period to invite people to the Ismaili Tariqa. However, the main and prolonged thrust of Dakwa activity took place from the time of Maulana Islam Shah, who sent Pirs from Iran to various parts of Hind and Sindh. Our great Pirs, such as Pir Sadruddin, Pir Hassan Kabiruddin and Pir Shams were Persian speaking. Yet, not only did they compose Ginans in various languages of the subcontinent, they did so using the notes and melodies of Indian music, which is a highly complex and a highly developed feature of Indian civilization. Peers have bequeathed a glorious legacy of devotional poetry or Ginan to us. This heritage comprises a vast corpus of Ginans running into hundreds, consisting of short and long compositions. The languages the Peers used is a, re is a remarkable example and proof of how diversity enriches and enhances the unity of the message. Ginas are composed in various languages that originate from Sanskrit, Gujarati, Punjabi, Sindhi, Saraiki, and what later became modern Hindi and Urdu are also used. Further, because the peers' own mother tongue was Farsi and they were well versed in Arabic, Ginans also contain many Arabic and Persian words. Ginans proved very effective in fulfilling the mission of the peers, not only because they were in languages understood by the local people, but also because the peers contextualized the message by cross-fertilization with Sufi and Bhakti movements, which were strong at that time. In other words, our great peers built on the diversity present in the subcontinent and used it as a strength to build the unity of the Ismaili Jamaat, the benefits of which last through the centuries to the present day. As we know, Maulana Hazar Imam highlights the importance of Ginans. In a Mubarak Farman made at Karachi in 1964, he said, Many times I have recommended to my spiritual children that they should remember Ginans, that they should understand the meaning of these Ginans, and that they should carry these meanings in their hearts. It is most important that my spiritual children, from wherever they may come, should, through
through the ages and from generation to generation build on this hold to this tradition which is so special so unique and so important to my jamaat the word gnan is from sanskrit and means knowledge thus the gnans are full of spiritual knowledge and wisdom they carry a strong message about the recognition of the imam of the time in the same gnan from which the title of this article comes the sadruddin exhorts the listeners to recognize the imam then your faith will be genuine he says pil gulmalisha in the popular gnan mal khajina bahut jabariya ends with these words draw the light into your innermost depths without the gur or imam it is like a pitch dark night sayyid muhammad shah in sahib ji tumore man bhave says i wandered through the four ages searching hard but i found none to match you my lord at the beginning of this particular ginan he declares that he can think of none other than the imam no other can ever please him in the signature verse he supplicates and says that he can never turn to any other guide except imam azman another moving theme of gunans is the closeness of the imam murid relationship sayyid imam shah says that the imam is present in every cell of our being and we should re- remember him with this conviction the sadruddin uses the analogies of the fa- flower and its scent or milk and the butter within it to show how closely linked we are to the imam's light the unity of the message contained in our diverse vinans is indeed a blessing for us follow the guidance of the light because the lamp is lit and manifest walana hazri imam during his 1992 visit to india referring to the emerging central asian jamaats made the following farman and remember that these murids come from the same interpretation but often with a different historical context and that historical context the context of nasir khosrow is very important and must not be forgotten the contemporary ismaili global jamaat predominantly consists of two historical traditions the tradition of pir sadruddin and the tradition of pir nasir khosrow it was due to the struggle and sacrifices of pir nasir and the dais he trained that the ismaili tariqa spread across from eastern iran to afghanistan present day tajikistan chitral and the northern areas of pakistan to the western region of china when the ismaili dawa reached chitral gilgit hunza yasin punyal ishkoman gizer and western china the dais from badakhshan brought with them the tradition of qasidas and madhos in persian which were usually recited with the accompaniment of dakh and rabab in the middle of the last century a new creative thrust began when allama nasir hunzai composed for the first time qasidas in bursheski one of the four main languages of the northern areas of pakistan The title of this article is from one of his devotional poems in the shimmering light entitled Secrets of the Heart. In this poem he urges the listeners to become an angel of the time and bow yourself before Adam if you are able to understand the secret of the image of the merciful. This is a reference to the Quranic account of the completion and perfection of Hazrat Adam when Allah breathed the divine spirit or nur into him and then commanded the angels to prostrate to him. In this verse 
The author conveys the fundamental principle of the Shia Ismaili interpretation of Islam that the divine spirit or nur must always be present among humankind for their spiritual and intellectual development and progress. Elsewhere in his remarkable corpus of devotional poetry, which is recited in Jamaat Khanas throughout the northern areas, Alama Nasir uses the Quranic analogy of the lamp. He asks, how is it possible for the lamp of Allah to be blown out when Allah himself declares in the Holy Quran that nobody can blow out his nur? The clear and unambiguous message in his devotional poetry is the ever presence of the divine guide or the imam of the time. His poetry inspires love, devotion, and obedience to the Imam of the time, which, as he says, are the characteristics of angels. Allama Nasir Hunzai has also written devotional poetry in Chinese terms.